Hey everyone, time to learn another useful trick inside Adobe Illustrator. I use this trick a lot um, because one of my clients uh, prints or is a promotional products distributor and so I work for them in re or vectorizing um, customer logos that they send in and they want to get printed on a mug or a koozie or a can cooler but all they have is this low res raster jpeg probably saved from a website um, version of their logo and that doesn't work for printing cases so my client sends their low res raster logos to me and i recreate them inside adobe illustrator and most of the time 99 percent of the time um, we don't even let the customer know because I can match their logo, you know, 100% right on. Um, if I have to substitute a font or or change part of the logo in order for it to print clearly, then we let them know. But otherwise, most of the time, they don't even know. So I'm going to walk through those steps with you so you um, can use this in the future if you need to. Uh, first, I'm going to bring my logo into Illustrator. So I'm going to go up to File and down to place and the logo I have is on my desktop here Acerity um, it's asking me if I know yes okay so I have my image here and I'm gonna click and drag so I get a nice big copy of it and the first thing you should always try is the auto trace or the image trace um, which is up here in my toolbar so with your placed image selected, if you just hit um, image trace and then expand, you can see it didn't do a very good job tracing it because it's a low res image. But, you know, sometimes I get nice high res raster images and it does work. But in this case, it's not going to work. So I'm going to control Z out of that and get back to my first um, placed image here. And you can see it's raster because when I do a control Y to view the outlines, it's blank. There's no outlines. That means it's a placed image. So first things first, let's create a new layer. So go to window layers and bring up your layer palette. <clears throat> Mine is over here on the right hand side and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call it artwork. And that's the layer that I'm going to draw on. So we have our logo, let's rename. If you double click on that layer one, you can rename it. So I'm gonna, if I turn the logo off, it goes away. So then I can draw over top of it on the artwork layer. And let's start by redrawing this diamond shape. And for me, I'm gonna, there's two different ways you could do this. You could draw each one of these as individual pieces. Um, but maybe we will create two lessons in one, and I'll show you how to do it um, with the Pathfinder. So first, let's draw our first big shape, which is the triangle. And then we're going to color that none so we can see the white lines. Then we're going to come in here and right over top, I'm just going to trace these, oops, trace these lines. try to do this quickly because I know it's boring to sit here and watch somebody draw. But we'll get on to the fun part here shortly. And by the way, I should back up. I am using the pen tool to do this drawing, which is over on my left hand side. close that path. Okay, over here on the left, it's the pen tool. And I'm clicking um, and tracing right over top the original logo. So now I'm going to make sure I color that white, which up here in my tool palette or my color palette, 
I want to make sure that I have the fill square selected. And then I'm going to hit white. And then I'm going to select my triangle here. And I'm just going to put in a red color. Um, there. Yeah, it was a little pink, wasn't it? Oh well, we can fix that later. So, <coughs> there is the first part of my logo. And you know what? I keep clicking on this placed image underneath, so a good way to stop that from happening is to go over to your layers palette. And if you click this empty box right next to the eyeball, it will lock that layer down. So now the only thing I can click on is my art. Okay, so there's our top logo. And you know what? That's going to bug me because it's um, all these lines and I would like it to be individual pieces. So I am going to, there's a couple of different ways you can do this too, but I am going to select both the white and the pink and then I'm going to go up to here object compound path I'm going to make nope that's not what I wanted to do we're going to use pathfinder so go up to window do pathfinder and let's bring our pathfinder out here so we can see okay now with both of your objects selected the white and the pink we are going to hit this first square, which is divide. And then what that is doing is making each of these, each of these pieces its own piece. So now instead of this white chunk being all one piece, we're going to delete these little pieces hanging off the edges. So we can delete that, we can delete that, we can delete that. And then I think, we'll find out here in a second, we have this now that we did the Pathfinder, it's selecting it all as one piece. So we're going to select all of that, and then we're going to hit the middle one here that's called Merge. Merge. And then does that all become one piece? Merge. Oh, I know. Okay, now we can go in and delete the white. And now it's just open behind there. So, yep, after you do the merge, just select the white. And then now it's cut out of the triangle. So now you could put a colored background behind there. And it, the colored background will show through instead of it being white. So... That's the nifty difty pathfinder. Put that back. Now let's go on to the text. Now I being seasoned in this particular industry, I can recognize this font off the top of my head. If you are doing a logo that you're not familiar with, you might have to do a little font searching. Um, and there are some fonts that I just can, can't find. Um, or, you know, it would be $100 to purchase them. And in that case, if you can't find the font, or, you know, first maybe suggest something similar, um, but usually a logo has to be exact. So um, in that case, I would redraw it. I would use the pen tool and I would redraw it. I know as horrible as that sounds, it doesn't happen very often. It's maybe happened twice in my um 10-year career in doing this, but just as a second option. So this larger font is called Times. And so I'm just going to start by typing it out. And it's going to be Times New Roman Italic. I'm going to drag it right on top so I can make sure that I match it as close as possible. And I'm going to go to my character tool, um, which can be found up here too. Windows, I believe it's under type all the way down. Under, 
go to type and then over to character you can bring it up that way and I'm going to use my character menu to kind of tweak this to make it match um, the original so I need to increase the size and then this A is not slanting quite the same so for now we're going to delete it And then I'm going to use my text tool and click, and I'm going to paste that A so it's a separate. I'm going to treat that letter separately from the rest. So let's work on the rest here. Okay, it looks like we have to decrease um, the amount of space in between the letters. So if you go to your character palette, that's this tool right here. It's a reversed out VA, and that's your spacing between um, or it's called tracking, tracking in between your individual letters. So let's bring that in a little bit tighter till it's closer. That is pretty darn close. And then I'm gonna do my register mark. So I'm gonna go back to my text tool. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna do an Alt R. Alt R is the shortcut for a register mark in Illustrator. So I'm going to use my, you can either decrease and work with your character in your character palette, or you can use your selection tool and use your bounding box here and move it around. So let's go back to this first A. It looks really close, except that it is slanted differently. So in order to work with the slant of your text, we need to go to, nope, this one. Okay, if you click and hold on the scale tool, it brings up your scaling options and your second option is called shear. So we're gonna shear, you're gonna select that shear and then you're gonna click and hold on your letter and you're gonna drag it back to the left. So that's pretty close. I'm going to do it again for you. Once you have your shear tool selected and your letter selected, you're going to click somewhere on that letter. I like to hold the shift key down just to keep things in line. And then you're going to hold and drag until it's slanted the way you want it slanted. So, and I think if I'm not mistaken, let's add some color to this so that I can tell. It looks like we need to slant it just a little bit more. or um, make it fatter. So let's do that as well. We have our letter selected. I'm going to go over to my character palette and there's a capital letter T down here. It's called the horizontal scale. So if we increase, move up our horizontal scale, it makes it fatter. And as you can see, it's also changing our slant. So I made it fatter. Let's go back to our shear tool and then let's shear it back just a little bit. There we go. All right. There, now it's colored correctly, really close. Now let's work on this bottom line. So I'm gonna use my text tool and I'm gonna click on the bottom. I'm gonna type out this line. And right away, I'm just gonna drop that point size down because I know it's not gonna be that big. Let's guess and let's go 40. Life insurance company. I'm going to use my arrow tool to get it. I always start in the bottom left hand corner and then I'm going to click in the upper right hand, hold my shift key down and drag it until the end kind of lines up. And that is pretty close, but if we zoom in, you can see it's not quite lined up. So I'm going to line that up again. I'm going to use my hand tool to shift my text and look at my whole screen here. See how we, see we're hanging off a little at the end. I think we're um, still in expanded mode. So let's use our arrow tool and keep our text selected and then go back to our horizontal scale, which is already up to 111. So let's notch that down. Oh there, see one little click and now it all lines up. So pretty darn close. Um, I'm going to zoom out so I'm going to use my magnifying tool but I'm going to hold the alt key down and then click out. 
And now to look, we can toggle, go back to our, um, let's go back to our layer palette here. And we're going to turn off the eyeball for the logo, the bottom layer, so we can see what our cleanly redrawn version looks like. And then we can flip on just the logo. I think I got everything, and I think it looks pretty good, other than this color. I'll show you an easy way to match that color. Um, I'm going to take all of my new artwork, select everything, and I'm going to drag it off to the side. And then my triangle, let's see, let's get this laid out better. If I select my pink triangle, and then I go to my eyedropper tool, select that, and if I click up here on this pink or red triangle up here, click the eyedropper, it automatically changes my selection down here to that same color. It kind of sucks up the color and, and applies it. Oh, I lost my little register mark over here. There we go. Oh, no, it goes down here. There. So now you have a nice, clean, redrawn version of an icky roster logo. Any questions, feel free to email me, um, Aaron Gifford Freelance at gmail.com. And I hope you are enjoying learning more about Illustrator.